My name is Warren Fadley. I'm a professional photographer who specializes in videotaping and photographing severe storms, such as this violent Texas storm which just produced a tornado about 30 minutes ago. Taking good photographs of lightning is not an easy task. Warren Fadley's lightning photographs are not only good, they're among the best ever taken. In general, Warren's still and video work effectively captures what storm chasing is all about. Well, I'm a professional storm chaser, and what I do is I go out and forecast and intercept all kinds of weather, uh, mostly severe weather, uh, chase tornadoes, lightning, hurricanes uh, all across the country, and record the events on film, video, and uh, motion picture film. And then, of course, those, uh, those uh, materials are marketed all over the world for editorial and commercial purposes. Tornado has just crossed the path of my car just in front of me. We do have uh, damage, heavy damage to the area. Tornado is still on the ground over in that area. I chase storms for many reasons. and It's adventurous, it's exciting, and it's, it's a challenge that's really unparalleled in anything else I've ever found. Emergency units rolling directly in front of my vehicle now. Tornado still on the ground over there behind the rain. No storm is the same. Whenever I go out, I never know what I'm going to see it. Large tornado still on the ground. Tornado just a couple of miles away now. This is the same tornado that just went through the town. When I'm heading towards a storm, when I'm chasing it, my one objective is to get as close as possible, do it in a safe manner, and set up my equipment to take photographs and film of the storm. And of course, that's not always easy. 446, tornado number two coming down. Well, this was a monstrous storm to begin with. It was a very large supercell. And this family of, of storms had already produced uh, several tornadoes that day. So I knew it was a potentially dangerous storm. OK, I've stopped the car to give a good look at the storm. This thing has produced at least two or three tornadoes since I've been watching it. As we look over towards the north, back over towards the northwest. Sometimes it's easy to be mesmerized and get carried away. And that's what I did on this day. I spent too much time on the hill looking at this storm. And by the time I made my decision to exit from it, it was almost too late. East over towards the northwest. Well, tornado on the ground behind the chase vehicle. Extreme wind. On the ground. It was quite frightening because at that time I was thinking that the tornado was actually forming right above me. And it may have been, but I think what I experienced in the car was the winds that were beginning to circulate on the ground. Uh, some of my best papers just flew out the window. I'm going to have to go back there. This is the area just a few minutes ago where I was escaping from. And as you can see, there is debris on the ground. Uh, there probably was a tornado on the ground behind me. It's a good thing I did make the exit I did. Probably above the car. Or make that a funnel cloud. I don't know if the guy down the road sees it or not. I'm pointing up now and warning him as I'm backing out of here. It is directly overhead. Directly overhead. You had a final cloud right above you. You had a pretty good final cloud right above you. It's gone now. I tried to honk the horn and, and let you know. Well, there are six types of storm chasers. Uh, there are the media storm chasers, like weather people who go out and, and chase storms and report. There are uh, scientific chasers who do research during certain times of the year, go out and actually chase storms. Uh, there are spotters who go out and spot storms for uh, communities and report that back to the Weather Service. Uh, there are uh, hobbyists, which are the largest group of chasers, are hobbyists. Some of them are professionals. Uh, they have professional occupations, and they chase as a hobby. There's the dreaded uh, yahoos, or the uh, thrill-seeking type of chasers. And there's also uh, what I do as a, as a profession. I actually chase storms for a living. So people chase for many reasons, and, and some of them chase for more than one reason. Uh, but most people that chase have some purpose out there for what they're doing. My earliest chase adventure had to be riding my bicycle into Dust Devils. 
Well, a dust devil, is a, it looks like a miniature tornado. It's made up of dust and debris, and you see them a lot in the southwest spinning across the highways or in, in vacant lots or through the desert. I don't remember the exact reason for doing it at the time. I guess maybe it was just the chasing that was in my blood, but a group of kids and myself decided we would take our little spider bikes and try to ride into the center of a dust devil. And a couple guys tried it and they weren't too successful, so finally I just happened to luck out and, and rode right into the center of a very large dust devil and was inside of it looking around. I couldn't believe what I saw. It was, it was amazing. The, the heat is the number one thing I remember. It was just so hot there you could barely breathe. And, you know, I guess you could say it was like a blast furnace. There was debris spinning around me and it was a weird orange color, I guess, from the light filtering in through the walls of the dust. And when I looked up, I could see a long snaky tube going up into the sky. And it was very impressive. Well, when I got out of the dust devil, my friends all came up to me because they, they lost track of me for quite a while. And they, I imagine they thought, oh boy, the Fadley boy has been lifted away to, you know, the land of Oz or something. Uh, but I was covered with dust and stickers, and uh, it was it was a memorable moment. There's no doubt one of my one of my earliest uh, uh, chase successes. Gust front is a very ominous looking cloud, a very low hanging cloud that, that precedes the storm. So sure I, want to drive through here. Uh, I don't think we have any choice. Very fast moving microbursts. That's, that's probably. Man, look at that thing move. Unbelievable. It turned the sky black. Oh, God. See it going. It is. One gust data. See it going right on, right on the front. This thing was so strong, it had so much momentum and so much energy that it was just to the point where it was about ready to start ripping things apart. We thought, well, we'll just drive down the road and let it you know, go across the road in front of us and, and shoot some video. But we didn't realize till it was too late that this thing was very strong. Uh, these winds are like, you know, they blow us off the road. We want to turn in front of the car and then the winds. God. No, it's black. I have zero visibility up here, too. I think we're in it. Well, hopefully this building over here won't come apart on this. Slow down, man. You got to stop. We're going to have an invisibility. We'll go on beyond this debris here in case this building comes apart. It's one of those situations where you're, you're you know, damned if you do, damned if you don't, but you have to drive through the thing. A little bit more as far as we can go. Yeah, we can Get away from the building there. We had no choice. We just had to cross our fingers and let it cross our path. Look at that out there. Looks like the end of the world. The first thing I shot as a journalist was I specialized in, in any kind of disaster, anything that was dangerous. And I don't think it was so much the danger I enjoyed. I don't have a death wish. I think it was the challenge of getting the photograph, coming back with a great photograph under the worst imaginable conditions. That was what is, is still what attracts me to it. My very first tornado chase in 1987 uh, I ended up in a town in West Texas that had been completely destroyed by a tornado. Being there firsthand, experiencing it was very humbling, and I knew from that point on that what I was going to pursue had a dark side in addition to the beautiful photographs. Storms could be also very tragic. The first time I was called a storm chaser was when Life Magazine published a photograph of mine. Uh, in 1989 and they called me uh, storm chasing, uh, storm chaser or storm chasing photographer or something like that. The photograph that appeared in Life magazine was of a lightning bolt hitting a light pole in an oil and gasoline storage facility in Tucson and that photograph launched my career. So it's amazing how just one little thing like that can turn your life around. And there's just something different about the really dangerous, severe storms. They have a certain feel or a certain charisma that's really hard to put in words. The conditions are just that extreme to where you, you know you're going to see something. This was a very frightening storm. We chased it from eastern Colorado into southwest Kansas, and uh, it became clear right off that this storm was going to be one of the monsters. It was going to be a very dangerous storm. Once it got going, it's, it's one of those storms that just just no way to stop.
southwest Kansas, we have a small problem here. We have a possible tornado forming, which uh, has just been warned by Dodge City Doppler radar as we're heading south, directly in our path. We also have a large hell shaft reported very large hell in this area. We were maneuvering to get in front of the storm and go around to the southwest side, but the storm made that turn. It made that right turn right into us, and we had no choice. We couldn't go back because the storm had closed in behind us. We couldn't go to the east because those farm roads were turning into mud. The only choice we had was to go straight forward south where we could see the sun in the distance. The problem was we knew there was large hail just to the west of us, and we also knew there was a tornado. So at this point, we were trapped. We had no choice but just to go straight forward and hope for the best. I uh, had a hell shaft directly to the west of it between us and the tornado. We're trying to cut in front of it. Uh, unfortunately, a storm appears to have become a right mover. Uh, but this time, we do have small marble and pea-sized hell on the road. Tom, just be careful up here. Uh, tennis ball-sized hell in the road, some possibly larger. Uh, but fortunately, we haven't hit anything yet. We could Dr. see the hailstones were getting larger as, as we went further south. They went from pea size to marble to golf ball, and then they were tangerine. Hell now hitting the car, uh, possible baseball size hell. One hit to the head. Ah, we just lost the front windshield. Tom, do you see? Okay, front windshield gone. Uh, another strike from the rear, possible rear, rear window gone. I'm just driving straight through. That's zero visibility through the front. Hell has stopped. Some marble and pea size still hitting the truck. When you have baseball, softball, softball, hellstone hitting you, it's frightening. I mean, there's, there's just no other word to put it. It is, it is the mo probably the most frightening moment I can remember in chasing. Uh, you're completely at the mercy of the hell. There's no way to defeat it. You, you know, if there's no shelter you can drive under, uh, you're, it's there. I mean, there's nothing you can do about it. It's like flak. It's just going to hit wherever it wants. Uh, and you don't know where it's going to hit. It may come through the windshield. Well, the hell broke out the front windshield and also one of the back panel windows. And as a matter of fact, the hell that hit the front windshield could not have picked a better place, at least for the uh, video camera. It hit right in the center where the lens was. And on the video, you notice one moment you can see that it kind of a kind of a sick-looking sky and rain and hell falling, and then bam, the next thing you know, uh, the window shatters. And so that that was a, a great perspective for the camera. Of course, if you were in the truck, it, it wasn't quite as exciting at the time it happened. I have something that you might enjoy looking at here. Whenever I chase, I always try to find little souvenirs. And this is one of my favorites from West Texas. Caught my pet hellstone. And uh, a farmer drove by with a cooler full of these and, and gave us some of them. This, this was actually, this is about 50% of its original size. But you can just imagine uh, the headache this would give you if it hit you in the head. But it's, it's kind of a fun thing. It's even got little pieces of, uh, of dirt ingrained into it. But it's, it makes a nice conversation piece.